Hi everyone, welcome to Rachel's studio. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna talk all about cream consistency paint. What it is, what I use it for, how you mix it up, and then I'm gonna demonstrate some beginner's techniques that you can use with it. And then we'll do some more creative, complicated, fun things. I'll just show you a few ways that I've used it in creative ways in some of my painting. And by the way, I am listening to you all. I'm taking polls once in a while on my community tab. And my latest poll was, what kind of videos do you want in 2023? And by far and away, it was techniques videos. So today's video, it will be technique heavy, and you will learn all sorts of really cool techniques that you can use with cream consistency paint. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First off, what is cream consistency paint? There's tea consistency paint that has a little bit of paint added to a lot of water. There's a milk consistency paint that has a medium amount of paint added to a medium amount of water. And then there's cream consistency paint, which is almost like paint straight out of the tube with just a little bit of water mixed into it. And so you use your cream consistency paint for your richest, lushest, darkest colors. Your darkest darks will be mixed with cream consistency paint for those little dark details that you put in your painting. So that answers the what it is. Let's look at some footage of me doing a little bit of a mixing demo to just show the bare bones basics of how to mix up cream consistency paint. I'm going to dip just the tip. I'm going to get a tiny little bit of water, just a tiny bit. And this paint is perfectly dry, but it's dry on my palette. And this is a great way to get a tiny little bit of cream consistency paint. And it actually is running. So that means that it's more milk consistency than cream consistency. Let's get more paint. I'm getting more paint off my dry palette. All these paints are dry. They are not straight from the tube. And we'll mix more in until we're happy with how thick it is. All right, that is not beading at the bottom. It does not drip when I turn it over. That is classic cream consistency paint. And I'll show you with another color. And notice I'm wringing out my brush to make sure I don't have a lot of water in this brush. And I'm gonna dip just the tip in, and then I'm just gonna scrub it on my French Ultramarine. Scrub, 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 until I have enough of for whatever I'm painting. So again, a lot of it's about water control and just continuing to add paint without adding water to your mix until it's thick enough to make you happy. And another thing that I will say is I don't hardly ever work with paint straight from the tube because when you go to mix it, you put a little water in a glop of freshly squeezed paint. That glop of paint is gonna work up into your bristles and all the paint's gonna be in your bristles and you don't need that much cream consistency paint most likely and you're gonna to have to really smear it around and work it to get the glops out and then you waste a bunch of paint because you don't need that much paint. Unless you're painting something really dark and in a large area. For example, I did squeeze out fresh paint and mixed, mixed, mixed it with clean, clear water to paint this little kitty because I had to paint a lot of darks in my first go. Usually what you're gonna wanna do is squeeze your paint out onto your palette, let it dry, and then mix however much water you need for the effect you want. So when you want dark paint or the strongest amount of that color, you just add a little water to your brush and scrub, scrub, scrub. And then you can make a mark on your paper and then decide, oh, is that too dry brush looking? Does it need more water? Let's talk about two basic brush strokes that you can make on dry paper with cream consistency paint. If you push down and go slower, you'll get a mark kind of like that. And notice that the edges are smooth, everything's nice and dark. Say you want a dry brush effect on dry paper. Then you hold your brush more parallel to your paint surface and go quicker. And that's the kind of brush mark you can use to get say ripples on water or fur hit by light or texture on rocks. So what happens if you apply cream consistency paint to damp paper? Let's get our paper a little wet. My brush has a little bit of paint in it. It's not per perfectly clean, but that's okay for our purposes. I'm gonna get this 
a little damp. So this will be wet in wet painting with cream consistency paint. So what happens, you have cream consistency paint with a little water added to it, and then you put a mark on wet paper. What does it turn it into? It turns it into a milk consistency paint once it hits the paper, because you add the paint plus the water in your brush with the water on your paper, it's gonna make the paint not be as concentrated. This is a beautiful result for making soft marks. And especially if you let your paper dry a few minutes, then you can get some really pretty effects. But these are the basic brush strokes that you can get is wet on dry, dry brush on dry, and wet on wet. Now let's look at some real world painting examples of me painting with cream consistency paint in some of my tutorials that I've done for my Patreon students, which on my Patreon, you will find a library of over 90 tutorials, you can go on rachelstudio.com slash Patreon index and look at the tutorials I have available to see if you're interested. And if you're not sure, still, you can join at the $3 level. And to my $3 patrons, I share reference photos, line drawings, and I often do more simple tutorials and Often when I do these long complex tutorials, I do several videos and I'll share like one of the videos. And I usually share the best one that is jam packed full of tips. So you get tons of content even at the $3 level. And it's a great way to try out my Patreon because you can pay $3 and all you lost is $3 and then you can unsubscribe the next month. So it's $3 a month. So I would love for you to come try out my Patreon and see if it's something you would enjoy. It's animal heavy and it is more advanced techniques heavy, just so you know. <laughs> Let's look at some real world in situ techniques. I'll start with the most straightforward and advance up to more complicated, almost intuitive approaches. Ironically enough, the easiest techniques in watercolor involve those with less water. Here's a dry on dry example that is fairly easy to master, but very rewarding because it gives such realistic textures, whether you're painting a dog's rough fur texture, as you see here, water sparkling in the sun, rocky textures, etc. Although this technique is called dry on dry, it should be called more like fast on dry because you can paint this rough texture with more wet consistencies like milk or tea, as long as you use a fast brush stroke. The other trick to this technique is to use the side of your brush, like you see me doing here. Here is another time I use dry on dry to get an interesting edge, which I often do in ears because having a variety of edges in your painting adds a lot of aesthetic appeal and ears provide that perfect place to do it. Here's another kitty I was working on. The paper was at the perfect wetness consistency for me to charge in large areas of the coat. You'll see me pause in this clip because I want to paint the eyeliner and I'm looking at my painting and I realize that the paper is still too wet and if I paint the eyeliner when the paper is too wet, it will bloom out and Kitty will look like he had a hard night. <laughs> then I'll put in edges of the ears with a dry on dry, AKA dry brush technique while I have that cream consistency paint in my brush. As my painting becomes a little drier, I'm opportunistic and I paint in eyeliner and other soft, small and dark elements of the face. This is one of my favorite techniques, by the way, to paint on buckling paper with cream consistency paint for small yet soft details. Often when I have a brush full of cream consistency paint, I'll just work on whatever elements call for being painted with cream consistency paint. In a real world watercolor painting situation, I'm opportunistic and paint on whatever section of the painting is at the perfect moisture level for the effect I want to achieve in that area. And you'll see that I paint the pupils last because I want them to be soft on damp paper, yet also be very controlled and not bloom out so much. Another dry paper technique I often use is putting in a map fairly early in the painting process. You always hear that the general rule is to paint from light to dark, but often, especially with complicated subject or those that must have perfectly drawn elements like faces, I'll use cream consistency paint to put in the darkest elements of the painting that serve as a scaffolding, holding things in their correct places and also serving as a point I can use to paint in the correct places and proportion by comparing them to that mapped in element. Here you see me painting in the dark areas around the dog and even bits of the brindling. I often do this with nose holes, corners of mouths, corners of eyes, chin edges, etc. So as the painting develops, they don't get lost once I can't see my pencil lines anymore. 
And as long as you let your painting dry between layers, these initial mapped areas won't budge. They might even soften a little, but usually that's a good thing anyway. You can even kind of dot at it like that. And scrumble. I mean, look how furry that is just to kind of scrumble this brush. Have I ever done that with this brush before? No, it's something I'm just discovering right here, right in front of your eyes. And that's just the trick to learning how to paint is just trying things and then discovering, oh, wow, that really looks realistic. Nice. <laughs> and I'm just kind of mushing my brush and just very dry brush fast technique with not the tip like this, but the side. Getting that beautiful fur texture that way. All right. Lovely. Scrumble. See my, my, also my bristles are all splayed and scrumbly. So I can just kind of scrumble in details. Scrumble. Put some scrumbly texture. I mean, that really adds interest. I'm getting cream consistency scrumble. Cream consistency scrumble. How's that? That makes some great texture. And if you feel like your scrumble gets too loud and too too textured and too over interesting, you can go in later and with a wet, clean, clear water brush and kind of soften it. In the next clip, you'll see me building up my darks in the water shadows and trees by using more watery paint. To get larger areas of darks, the general rule is that the best way to do that is by painting several layers of milk consistency paint, allowing them to dry to get deeper, complex, beautiful, dark, larger areas. But for small pops of dark detail, that is where you're most likely going to more commonly use cream consistency paint, as you'll see me doing next in this same painting. I'll paint dark, small details on dry paper. For example, I paint the grasses with a wisp brush and thick cream consistency paint. By the way, this little tutorial is available on my Patreon and is a great little general, not too difficult painting to practice several landscape elements such as grass, bark, water, and foliage textures. Next is a technique that involves painting on dry paper and then blending it in. So it's a little more complicated than the previous techniques. In this clip, I'll paint the dark outline around this dog's ear. I made this decision because I felt like the dog was blending too much with the background. So I paint a dark line on dry paper, then follow that with milk consistency when the dark line is still wet to blend it into the background so it looks like a shadow and not a cut out line along the dog's ear. So those are the simpler techniques on dry paper and beginners rejoice. You can paint a whole painting with just wet on dry techniques. Then when you're ready, I encourage you to start playing an experiment with wet and wet techniques. First on scraps of paper, then start incorporating them into your paintings for looser, dreamier, softer looking results in your work. Too many hard edges in a painting can make it look stiff with cut out looking elements. And that's where wet and wet techniques can take your work to the next level. Let's take a look at some of those kinds of wet and wet techniques. The first one will be the easiest and will progress to harder things. And by the way, what makes these techniques harder is being able to read your paper moisture levels and when they're ready for the effect you want. The wetter your paper, the more the paint will bloom, which is good for clouds maybe, but not so good for eyeliner or smaller soft details. You want to keep soft, but hold their shape. So it does take practice and you won't learn until you start practicing and making lots and lots of mistakes. So master of the obvious here, the first thing to do when working on wet paper is to get your paper wet with usually either clear, clean water or a tea consistency wash. Almost always you don't want puddles, but an even glistening coat of water on your paper. Then you may want to drop in your cream consistency paint right away for a bigger, softer bloom effect or you might want to wait a bit until your paper starts to buckle because the water is absorbing into it, aka this is what we call the buckling stage of paper moisture, which I have a video about. And this is often a perfect time for more controlled yet soft results. 
to paint cream consistency paint on buckling paper, which by the way is maybe my number one all time favorite technique is cream consistency on buckling paper. But it's probably also the most complicated, but the only thing that makes it complicated is knowing when your paper is ready and dry enough, yet still wet enough to receive the cream consistency paint. But in the case of this example, I want a soft bunny tail that blooms a good bit. So I paint my cream consistency paint on wetter paper. In this next clip, I hated it because I had all these beautiful textures, which we'll rewind and discuss in a minute, but I felt like the bunny's backside needed to be a lot darker. So I swished on some skim milk consistency strokes over the background and bunny to tie everything together and make a beautiful design element. And then I painted a few other elements to give my paper a chance to dry. And then went in with cream consistency black along the back of the bunny for that perfect fur out look. Those of you who know me know I love this. But let's rewind because I want to show you a bit more complicated technique. And remember, we're going from simple to complicated. And it happened earlier in this painting process of this bunny. And it involves painting cream consistency paint on dry paper around a larger area or element that I want to keep light. So you see me painting the black paint on the bunny's back leg around a larger area of dry white paper, letting it half dry so it sets up on the paper and is less likely to move, then going in with almost puddling clear water to activate the edges of the black and letting it paint itself into the white area which gives an interesting, organic, more sophisticated look. That I decided later to cover all that up broke my heart, but hey, that's watercolor. Let's look at one last example of wet and wet that I absolutely adore to do when the opportunity presents itself, and that is to mix up a lot of granulating cream consistency paint for a soft yet realistic blurred out background. Like in pictures with a shallow depth of field where the subject is in focus and the background is romantically blurred out. That was my goal with this deer painting. So I mixed up a bunch of cream consistency green that is a mix of Windsor green gold and French ultramarine, which granulates out beautifully, by the way. And by the way, this deer original is still available and there's links in the description to that and lots of other goodies like free tutorials and my favorite supplies and lots more. But anyway, I rarely paint with paint straight out of the tube, but in the rare circumstance where I'm covering a large area and I want to do it all in one layer to take full advantage of granulation and the freshness of one wash, I'll sacrifice wasting paint in the name of a gorgeous result. So here I am squeezing out fresh paint and getting it mixed evenly with water. The dark green line that goes across the background is painted with cream consistency paint. And then the paint abutting it is more watery which makes for a water differential. And that creates beautiful blooms because the water moves itself on the paper because of different amounts of water in different areas. And that creates beautiful blooms and granulating interactions between the two different paint consistencies. This is where watercolor shines and does what no other medium can do, which is evolve and almost paint itself using the power of nature's laws. The same processes that cause erosion in nature are happening right in front of your eyes on your paper. It's just so special. I love that about watercolor. And that's where we'll end. I could go on and on. And it actually makes sense that I make a video now for tea consistency techniques and milk consistency paint techniques. So that's probably what will be coming next, especially if I hear feedback from you all that you love this video. So leave me a comment and tell me what you think of this video because that really helps me understand where to go next with my content. It helps tell the algorithm that you enjoy this content and want to talk to me in the comments. And I just love to hear from you. So go leave me a comment if you watch this video to this point because you get a prize. <laughs> Go check out my Facebook group and post your paintings there. Join my Patreon if you'd like to learn from me more in depth. Like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out my other content. I also have a few tutorials coming that are fast and easy, both for beginners to help them just have fun and explore their materials, but also for the advanced artist who may feel stuck or they just can't seem to bring themselves into the studio and get started. These are great little starters to warm you up, to just have fun with your watercolors. That's how it should be. And so look out for those on my channel too. Those are coming. 
I want to introduce Flurkin to you. So there will be a video about my new cat coming and lots of good things coming in 2023. I'm so excited about. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible, who make my dreams come true. Thank you to all of you who leave a comment. If you watch this, leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Go binge some of my other content. My hacks videos are really fun and I act like a complete idiot in some of them. Note from the future, I am making a tea consistency and milk consistency version of this video tutorial for the next two weeks. So lots of good things coming. So be sure to subscribe. You're not going to want to miss it. Thanks so much again, y'all. Now go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.